Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and today we gotta talk about the complete and utter depravity, the lack of concern for consequences for human life that was shown to us live in HD by the killers of Andreas Propes, the 64-year-old retired police officer that was hit while cycling by teens who stole a car and did so intentionally for fun before they posted the video on social media. This is an incredibly insane story, and it's important for us to look at it because a lot of people will tell you that these criminal types just need a good job. They just need to put food on the table for their family. But as we've learned throughout this entire process, this whole entire crime spree was done for fun, for entertainment, for the pure joy of it. And that is reflected not only in that initial video that we saw, but in their statements to the police when they were eventually arrested and in their performance in the courtroom where they're laughing and flipping off the victim's family. It is absolute insanity on display, but you need to look at it so that every time a left-wing person tells you that what these people need is more education, more midnight basketball, more whatever, you can understand how completely and utterly absurd that is. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everybody who signed up over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And thank you to my podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. All right, go. Go, go, go. Tip me move in. <laughs> bitch ass. Stop talking shit, bitch. Stop talking shit. Now, I can't show you much of this video, but I'm sure from the still images, you guys will remember the story. The full video will be linked in the description box of this video. But I remember YouTube actually giving me an age restriction when I showed just the contact that they made between themselves and another vehicle that they tried to run off the road before they decided to murder Andreas Probst. <laughs> That being said, as you can see and hear for yourself, they're talking about targeting this individual directly. They're coming up right behind him. They're zooming up. And they did, in fact, hit the man while he was cycling. He did fall on the concrete, and this ultimately ended up leading to his death. But unfortunately, that's just the beginning of the story, the entry point for the horror that these two individuals have inflicted on the residents of Las Vegas, because this was a part of a three-car theft crime spree where they actually hit another person on the road, age 72, who thankfully survived. And by the way, I talked about how the driver had more culpability in this particular murder. Well, it turns out the other video is being filmed by Ayala, who's the driver in the video of the murder. And the other guy, Yasmir Keys, the young black man, age 16, he was the one driving in that particular instance. So they were basically running over people, innocent civilians, for their own entertainment, filming it, for social media, for fun, to post later, and they were taking turns seeing how much damage that they could inflict on the everyday citizens of Las Vegas. Now look, I said this story was going to get worse, and it might be hard to imagine that that is possible, but we start at first with Keyes' mother, Yasmir Keyes, the one who we just found out was the driver behind the wheel of the attempted murder of the 70-plus-year-old person that they hit with the car, her saying that there's a lot of lies in the media and her son's side of the story is definitely going to come out as if there is a side of the story for her son that could in any way, shape, or form justify this. Now, Key's mother, unsurprisingly, has a lengthy criminal history. She was actually charged with five counts of child abuse in 2016 after cops found her five children 
age two to nine, home alone without any access to food. Now it says a knife was left on the kitchen counter. I'm assuming that's where a knife might be. But again, we're talking about children age two to nine. There was no sitters and the house was in generally poor condition. Now those charges ultimately ended up being dropped due to some kind of diversion program. And it's unfortunate because maybe just maybe if they would have done something about this mother and her willful neglect of her children, they could have turned out differently because again, they were just ages two to nine. There was so much more that you could have made of your life if you weren't under the tutelage of this woman who is excusing the murder for pleasure for joy of her son just because she thinks it's unfair that you're calling out what you can see with your own lying eyes now i talked about the fact that we are likely going to find lengthy juvenile histories and with ayala the driver behind the wheel at the time of this murder Turns out that was in fact the case. Ayala is reported to have a long criminal history in the juvenile system, according to 8 News Now. And actually at the time of the arrest, he had a warrant for domestic violence by method of strangulation. And one need only ask the basic question, which is why wasn't this kid taken off the streets before when obviously he was a repeat offender who showed this pattern of behavior throughout the juvenile system? I think it is due to the fact that we have gone soft on crime, soft on juvenile offenders, and for some reason, we can't look at somebody who's committing crime after crime after crime, has a face tattoo, shows no remorse over and over again, and think, you know, maybe this person doesn't deserve 57 chances. Maybe this person shouldn't be allowed to steal car after car after car when he shows signs of violence even beyond his history of car theft. And by the way, I am not speculating, imagining, manufacturing the fact that Jesus Ayala had absolutely no fear of criminal consequences because when he was arrested, after again, three separate hit and run incidents, three separate stolen cars, they hit two individuals on the road, one of them died, he said the following. He told an officer that he'd get, quote, a slap on the wrist and he'd be, quote, out in 30 days after he was taken into custody on the day of the crime spree, according to the report. By the way, these comments were captured on the officer's worn body cam, and they will be submitted into evidence. Now, if you're Jesus Ayala, and you have the lengthy criminal history that is being reported by News 8 out in Las Vegas, and you've been arrested over and over again, and you've been charged over and over again, and you've been sent to diversion programs, maybe the maximum was a shock incarceration for something like 30 days, you can understand why he would be so bold, so confident in saying this. In fact, we had a scenario that we covered on this channel before, where somebody who started their crime spree in Chicago, which is Cook County, moved to the end of their crime spree in Wayne County, where he told the officer similar things, and in fact, he actually motioned several times for a transfer back to Cook County in order to avoid the much stricter prosecutions. What we see time and time again from these criminals is that they know that the system is soft. They know that the system caters to them and that emboldens them to commit ever increasing amounts of crime and to have absolutely no fear of criminal consequences to the point where he could commit two attempted murders because he didn't know that that guy died at that point in time. He could announce that he was in a hit and run of an individual when he's being arrested. By the way, he was pulled over for the bad driving in the stolen car. The cops weren't fully aware of what he did until they actually talked to him and then pieced back the evidence later and still be confident that he would be out within 30 days absolute maximum because he expected to be charged as a juvenile. He expected a slap on the wrist because that's what we taught him to expect by having the system go so soft on him. And again, I will remind you that according to the District of Columbia law enforcement, I believe it's the D.C. Metro Police, when they arrest somebody finally for a homicide, that is usually after 11 previous arrests where they could have got that person off the streets before. Unsurprisingly, a similar pattern has presented itself here where we have a guy with a lengthy criminal history, an open warrant, and then eventually he kills somebody and now all of a sudden prosecutors who ignored all the warning signs before 
want to take things seriously now after it's too late after a family member has been killed and you realize that you're dealing with a pair of sociopaths that enjoy inflicting pain on people and they enjoy it so much that they're willing to record it and post it on social media themselves the family of andreas probe says the behavior of the two murder suspects makes them angry despite the serious felony charges each are facing the pair were all smiles in court tuesday Sitting four seats apart from each other in district court Tuesday to set a trial date, 18-year-old Jesus Ayala and 16-year-old Jameer Keyes were seen giggling, conversing, covering their faces from media, and flipping off the probe's family. And this brings us to the ultimate conclusion of making the criminal feel like they're entitled to do whatever they want, portraying them as the victim in our society, which is their performance in the courtroom, where they're laughing as the details of the crime are being described. They're flipping off the daughter who just lost her father in the courtroom, showing blatant signs of disrespect and having a conversation with one another like it's a day at the beach, like they're just chilling, having a great time. They're proud of what they did. They're proud of the pain that they inflicted and they feel no remorse and they have still no fear of consequences because yet again, the system has not taught them to fear any consequences. Nobody in their lives have taught them to fear any consequences, including the families who showed up in support of them because you know what really brings a family together? When you rip a father away from another family and you do it for entertainment and then you need the support of your community community to say oh no you're definitely good boys can't wait for their side of the story to come out how maybe they were traumatized by a history of racism against latinos and against blacks and that's why they had to run down this old police officer who is perpetuating that in spirit or some other nonsense like that how are you, can you sit there after taking a man's life and act like such an entitled it's a scene that made the family of retired police chief Andreas Probst livid. His daughter Taylor shocked by the callous conduct. They really have no remorse that this is just a game to them. Honestly, I give a lot of respect to the daughter in this situation, Taylor, because I have no idea how this woman is so calm in the courtroom. If I saw the people who murdered my father, and I know it's alleged right now because they haven't been convicted, but the thing is, they actually filmed themselves doing it, so I'm pretty comfortable in calling them murderers, laughing and having a good time, enjoying themselves, and then flipping me and the remainder of my family off in the courtroom, I would be losing my other loving mind. Now, they're technically not eligible for the death penalty because the death penalty, you have to be 18 at the time that you committed the crime. They are being charged as adults, but the Supreme Court has ruled what it's ruled, even though one's 18 now and the other one is 16. But I would be pushing for the absolute maximum sentence, life without the possibility of parole, send them to solitaire. And also, you know, after you convict these people in a court of law, maybe everybody takes a lunch break and you leave me there with members of my family and a car and maybe they're in the road so they can experience a similar amount of pain. Not that serious. Video from grand jury evidence released Monday shows Ayala joking around with an officer in the back of a police car following his arrest. On the news last night, I, I once again saw a brand new piece of video that I never seen before. Ayala's public defender, David Westbrook, argued in court he saw the body cam footage on our channel for the first time. I don't know if I need a press pass to get discovery, but I would certainly like to get some discovery in this case before the media gets it. Now look, the public defender seems really desperate right here, and I understand why. It's gotta be really difficult to defend clients that are laughing in the courtroom, that everybody in the public hates because they videotape themselves committing the crime, and of course, that are obviously guilty because they videotape themselves committing the crime so now he's trying to complain about the fact that the media gets more and more footage each and every day and the example of which is the fact that Ayala was also joking around in the back of the squad car with the officers after committing this heinous murder however the evidence was not obtained through prosecutors but through a public records request I understand the and to be clear, despite the fact that the local media is not getting this from prosecutors, they're actually getting this from open record requests, I need the prosecutors to turn over absolutely everything to them because in no way, shape, or form should this case be turned over on appeal due to a technicality, due to a Brady violation. It is an absolute slam dunk. There is no reason to throw an elbow out randomly and get a technical foul 
on your way to score on this case. This is the most winnable case in history, and if you botch it due to procedural violations, you're crazy. In fact, I would go out of my way to hand deliver, send five different couriers in order to do so, make them wear body cameras while doing the delivery to the defense attorney so that in no way, shape, or form this case can be messed up due to procedural violations because not only are these people guilty, not only do they deserve to be locked up for a long period of time, but it would be a heinous crime to botch this case in any way. Jacqueline Bluth acknowledged media is allowed access to grand jury exhibits. Still, Westbrook told the judge he's concerned about finding fair jurors in the case because of the media attention. The family of probes telling reporters it's ironic Ayala's attorney is worried about media attention when police say the duo posted what became a viral video of the crime. It was your people who put it in the media first. Your clients. Your clients are the ones that put that on social media. Wife Crystal Probst wears her husband's shattered Apple Watch, which first alerted authorities of the tragedy. Yeah, I gotta love the wife right there making fun of them for saying, oh, we have too much media bias, and that's gonna impact our ability to select a jury, because they did post the video. They made it go viral. They wanted it to be a thing. They enjoyed it, and now they're suffering the consequences. And I hope they get an unbiased jury, because by the way, it's not going to take a biased jury to convict these individuals. Anybody with half a brain cell knows that they're guilty, knows that they deserve a strict sentence, not only for this murder, this brutal murder, but for the attempted murder and the other hit and run of the vehicle that is also apparently captured on film. But hey, those are just my thoughts about this case. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you liked the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the absolute craziness of this Vegas case. Till next time.